University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Two more teams are here tonight to do battle under the time-hallowed rules of this competition, although to ensure their safety again this year, they're playing between screens and with the aid of earpieces to ensure they can still hear themselves confer. As COVID has dictated that these matches will be played over two academic years rather than one, we've also relaxed the rule that would have meant players who will take their degrees at the end of the first of those years wouldn't be allowed to play. Now, the team from Strathclyde University represented an institution that originated in 1796 as the brainchild of a pioneering professor at the University of Glasgow and which underwent a series of mergers before receiving its royal charter in 1964. Alumni of its predecessor institutions include the inventor John Logie Baird and the explorer David Livingston, as well as more recently Annabel Goldie, the Paralympic medalist Aileen McGlynn and the pop musicians Alex Kapranos and Laura Maybury representing around 23,000 students and with an average age of 21. Let's meet the Strathclyde team. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kirsch. I'm from Potsdam in Germany, and I'm studying for an MSc in Data Analytics. Hi, I'm Andrew Villard. I'm from Denny, and I'm studying for a PhD in Chemical Engineering. And their captain? Hi, I'm Martin Monaghan. I'm from White Engineer Partick, and I'm studying for a Master's in Physics. Hi, I'm Rihanna McGee. I'm from Gourock and I'm studying English and French. Well, now, the University of Reading was founded in the 19th century as an extension college of the University of Oxford and received its Royal Charter in 1926. Its campuses include a site in central Reading donated in 1904 by the Palmer family of biscuit tycoons. Alumni include the Turner Prize nominee Cornelia Parker, the journalist Joan Smith, the singer Jamie Callum and the politician Penny Mordaunt, representing around 18,000 students and with an average age of a sprightly 38. Let's meet the Reading team. Hi, I'm Alex Skerbik. I'm from Springvale, Pennsylvania. and I'm studying my master's in English literature. Hello, I'm Margaret Ounsley. I live in Reading and I'm studying for a PhD in poor law history. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Michael Hutchinson, originally from Andover and now living in Caversham, and I'm studying for a PGCE. I am Sylvian Jesudas. I am from Tanjavur, India, and I'm doing my uh, PhD in marketing. OK, the rules are the same as ever, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for 10. What weather phenomenon links a repeated line of Feste the Clown's song in Twelfth Night the first line of the general prologue to the Canterbury Tales and the poem by Emily Dickinson that includes the lines Half a dozen kissed the eaves and made the Reading gables Elmsley. laugh. Showers. I'll accept that, yes, rain. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses on film. All three answers begin with the same short word. Starring River Phoenix and Keanu Reeves, which 1991 film by Gus Van Sant incorporates elements of Shakespeare's Henry IV, Part I. Um, is it my, my Own Private Idaho? Give that a go. Does that sound... That sounds, yeah, that, yeah, is that yeah, it? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like... My Own Private Idaho. That's correct, yes. Which 1988 animated fantasy by Studio Ghibli concerns two young sisters and their encounters with friendly wood spirits? It's a, so it's, is it going to start with My, my Neighbour Totoro? Ah, my neighbour Totoro yeah. is good. Is it Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Go for it, yeah. My neighbour Totoro. Correct. Michelle Williams plays the character named in the title of which 2011 film directed by Simon Curtis with Kenneth Branagh as Laurence Olivier? I think this is My Week with Marilyn. I, yeah. Happy with that? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Week with Marilyn. Correct. Ten points for this. Although its origins are a matter of dispute, what concerted action made its first appearance internationally at the 1986 FIFA World Cup, the phenomenon taking the first part of its two-word name from that tournament's host country? Ah. Reading Elmsley. Mexican Wave. Mexican Wave is correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on a building. Originally designed by Paul Wallet and completed in 1894, which building was substantially reconstructed to a design by Norman Foster in the 1990s? 
Its new features include a steel and glass dome and an observation platform. Hmm? Lloyds, um, nominate Ounsley. Is it the Lloyds building? No, it's the Reichstag in Berlin. Okay. In 1995, which Bulgarian-born experimental artist and his wife, Jean-Claude, wrapped the Reichstag building in more than a million square feet of silver fabric? He died in 2020. So I think that's Christo. Uh, yeah, Christo. Christo is correct. Born in 1932, which German artist created an elongated glass representation of the national flag in black, red and gold that's displayed in the entrance hall of the Reichstag? Hmm. 1932. Oh, that's Germany. German, yeah. Yes. German. That's German flag. Yeah. Yeah, but what's going to be the German artist? Um, it's not necessarily German artist. Yeah, German true. Artist. Um, no, because it was a, a yeah, British think. architect. Oh. Um, oh. Jasper Johns. No, it's Gerhard Richter. Yeah. Right, 10 points for this. Born in 1833, which Russian's accomplishments include notable research on aldehydes, ah. founding medical... Reading Hutchinson. Oridin. Oridin is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on geologists. Born in Copenhagen in 1638, which early geologists indicated the true origin of fossil animals and differentiated between stratified and volcanic rocks? Did he say Germany? Understand. What did he say, Germany? Germany, 1638. Oh, okay. No, yes. that's not what you're saying. Um, it, it won't be one of the Humboldts, will it? I don't know. It's too early. I'm just going to say go, go for it, it. Ball rolling. Humboldt. No, it's Niklaus Stenner. Mm. In the early 20th century, the British geologist Gertrude Ellis became known for her pioneering research into which fossil marine invertebrates, named from the Greek for marked with letters? It's not ammonites, is it? Ammonites. It's graptolites. Born in 1785, Adam Sedgwick calculated the stratigraphic succession of fossil-bearing rocks in North Wales and assigned the oldest of them to what geological period? Is that North Wales? Yeah. North Wales is normally Cambrian. Ordovician. 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 Yeah, so we'll go yeah. Ordovician. Yeah. Ordovician. No, it's Cambrian. Oh. <laughs> We're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you'll see a map of the Departements of France. For ten points, give the single word that the names of the highlighted departments have in common. Strathclyde Kirsch. Pyrenees. Pyrenees is correct, yes. <laughs> they all contain the word Pyrenees, their department names. Your picture bonus is three more groups of departments whose names have one word in common. Give the single word in each case. Firstly... Um, um, Loire? Yeah, I think yeah. it's Loire. Yeah. Loire. It is the Loire. Secondly... Um, Seine, maybe? Yeah, that could probably, be. yeah. yeah. Uh, Seine. Seine is correct. And finally... Alps, I think. Can... Yeah, yeah. yeah, Alps. The Alps is correct, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. The Treaty of Trianon was signed in June 1920 between representatives of the Allied powers and which Central European country? This landlocked nation lost two-thirds of its territory as a result. Strathclyde Monaghan. Poland. No, you lose five points. As a result, including the regions of Slovakia, Croatia, Slavonia and Transylvania. Uh, Reading Hutchinson. Hungary. Hungary is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on major acts passed under 20th century prime ministers and listed in short profiles on the gov.uk website. Name the prime minister in office when each was enacted. Firstly, the Old Age Pensions Act that provided for a non-contributory old age pension for eligible people over 70 earning less than £31, 10 shillings a year. Asquith. Yeah, Asquith. H.H. H. Asquith is correct in 1908. Secondly, the Government of India Act that gave limited powers of self-government. The website states it was heavily opposed by Winston Churchill. Attlee, I think. Yes, it would be, wouldn't it, around then, yeah? yeah. Attlee? No, it wasn't. It was Stanley Baldwin. Mm. And finally, the Murder Abolition of Death Penalty Act. This suspended the death penalty in England, Wales and Scotland. Oh, Wilson. 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 Harold Wilson is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. I need the title of a song here, referring to the route taken by Lenin when he was smuggled into Russia during the First World War. The lyric, 
From Lake Geneva to the Finland Station features in which 1986 track by the Pet Shop Boys? Reading Hutchinson. Go West. No. Strathclyde Laird. West End Girls. It is West End Girls, yes. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on New Orleans in fiction. Running from 2010 to 2013, which television drama series by David Simon is set in New Orleans in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, with particular focus on the city's musicians? I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. Um, Some about jazz, maybe. I don't know. Nothing. It's Tramé. Which 2018 video game sequel is set partly in the fictional city of Saint-Denis, an analogue of late 19th century New Orleans? Again, uh, oh, could that be uh, Red Dead Redemption? I don't know. Red Dead Redemption. Two. Two is correct, yes. Which 2009 animated film tells the story of Tiana, a waitress in the 1920s New Orleans who dreams of opening her own restaurant? Uh, the Princess and the Frog. Correct. Ten points for this. Give either the noun or the adjective here when referring to related techniques in microscopy. For what does the letter F for Foxtrot stand in the acronyms FLIM, FRAP and FISH? As an adjective... Strathclyde Monaghan! Fluorescence. Fluorescence is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on Lady Jane Grey. Supported by John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland, Lady Jane Grey was proclaimed Queen of England for a brief period on the death of which monarch? I think this. Oh, um, it was, um, it could, I think it might be, be Edward. No, no the Edward, Edward, yeah. It was I think it's Edward the Sixth. Sixth. Wasn't, I think. Uh, Edward the Sixth. Edward the Sixth is right. Lady Jane Grey was executed in 1554, shortly after the failure of which rebellion, originating in Kent and known by the name of its leader. I don't know. Is that is that the box? No, the box. No, the box. Oh, that was in China. Uh, no, the, the, the Monmouth. Was yeah. It? Yeah. Uh, Monmouth. No, that was much later. It's Wyatt's Rebellion. Shared with the town in Surrey, what was the given name of Lady Jane Grey's husband who was executed alongside her? He was the son of John Dudley. Given name, I don't know, William or Richard or something like that. No, share with that, I don't know. Richard, yeah. yeah. Uh, Richard. No, it was Guildford. Ten points for this. Born in 1876, the sculptor Edvard Eriksson is perhaps best known for which public sculpture? Sometimes described as a national symbol, it depicts a character created by the author of The Princess and the Pea and the Reading Smoky. Hutchinson. The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on shorter letters that can be made by using any of the ten letters of the plural word algorithms. Firstly, a noun meaning an extremely large person or organisation, named after a Philistine from the city of Gath, who appears in the first book of Samuel. Yeah. Uh, Goliath. Goliath is correct. Secondly, a graph in statistics consisting of rectangles of varying widths and lengths, where the area of each rectangle represents the frequency of occurrence in each interval. I think it might be a histogram. That would fit oh. kind of the right... There's no H in... Oh, yes. Yeah, there is, yeah. yeah. Histogram. Histogram is correct. In mathematics, the power to which a base number is raised to produce a given result, it consists of a mantissa and a characteristic. Mm, logarithm? A logarithm? That would fit, wouldn't log, it? Log it's the sort logarithm. Of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, logarithm. Logarithm is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you're going to hear a piece of popular music. For ten points, I specifically want the name of the rapper you hear in this section. <laughs> Reading Hutchinson. Bad Bunny. No. You can hear a bit more Strathclyde, Strathclyde if you want Monaghan. To. Um, Louis Fonza. No, it was Daddy Yankee. Fonzie is on the single, but he wasn't heard in that section. So we're going to take uh, another starter question in the meantime, and we'll take the music bonuses in a moment or two. I need a three-word term here. Which 17th century constitutional document prohibited royal practices such as arbitrary imprisonment, non-parliamentary taxes, and declarations of martial law. Ah. It was passed... Reading Elmsley. Bill of Rights. No, you lose five points. It was passed by Charles I in 1628. 
Strathclyde Cash. Bill of Parliament. There was the petition of right. The Bill of Rights was later. Ten points for this. In a move that remains disputed, in 2002, the US House of Representatives, Resolution 269, asserted that the Italian-American inventor Antonio Meucci invented what device in the 19th century? Strathclyde Kirsch. The telephone. The telephone is correct, yes. You'll recall that we heard Daddy Yankee featuring on 2017's Despacito. Its global success prompted a new wave of mainstream pop interest in reggaeton, a genre of Latin rap originating in Puerto Rico. Your bonuses are three examples of Anglophone acts collaborating with reggaeton artists. First, the US artist in this clip, singing in Spanish and featuring on a song by J Balvin and Willie William. Is this Shakira, maybe? No, it's not. That's a US. Oh. Any idea? What's... Oh, it's like it's maybe, like maybe, like maybe, like maybe or something? Yeah. Mabel? I don't think, I don't think it is, but... Just, I know it, but... Uh, Mabel? No, that's Beyoncé in Mi Gente. Secondly, this North American artist also singing in Spanish. The song is a collaboration with Bad Bunny. Could it be, I said North American, so maybe Canadian, like Drake or something, maybe? Is it Justin Bieber? Oh, that's a Christian shout, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin Bieber? No, it's Drake. And finally, name the lead female artist here. It's Cardi B, isn't it? Cardi B. Cardi B. It is Cardi B, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. His smile and his dagger were very close, wrote Cabrera de Cordoba, the official court historian of which European monarch, born in Valladolid in 1527, he was briefly joint sovereign of England. Strathclyde Monaghan. Uh, Philip II. Philip II is correct. So you get these bonuses, you'll take the lead. They're on ratios. In ISO 216, the international standard on paper sizes, what is the height-to-width ratio of all pages in portrait orientation? Uh, I think it's root 2, because in it, if it's like A4 and A5, it's the other root 2, so that when you like double them, they... Is it root... Oh, right, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Um, uh, 1 to root 2. Now, I asked for the height-to-width ratio in portrait and not in landscape. You give me landscape. What root of two relates to the frequency of neighbouring notes in the chromatic scale? No idea. Three. How many are there? 14? Yeah. So, I don't know, seven? Sure. Seven? No, it's 12th. <laughs> Relating to the way an oracle proposed to end a plague, the Delian problem recounted by Eratosthenes concerns what root of two? No idea. Uh, yeah, something, yeah, probably something like that. Fourth. No, it's the cube or the third. Ten points for this. In which Belgian city is St. Bavo's Cathedral, noted for its altarpiece attributed to the Van Eyck brothers and known as the Adoration of... Reading the Hutchinson. Uh, Ghent. Ghent is correct. <laughs> right, these bonuses you're going to get now, Reading, are on artists and educators nominated for but not awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. In each case, name the person from the description. Firstly, an author and advocate of non-violence who died in 1910. His works include Resurrection, The Cossacks and Haji Murat. Anything? No. Anything? No. Um, what, what does it sound like nationality was? Russian, 1910. Um, Maximilian. Uh, it was Tolstoy. Of course, okay. Mm. Secondly, an Italian educator in 1896, she became the first woman to graduate in medicine from the University of Rome. Uh, I don't know any Italian educators. What's the what's the Montessori one? I think they were German, but you could try Montessori. Can I nominate you? Yeah. Um, nominate Ounsley. Montessori. It was Maria Montessori. And finally, a Catalan cellist and composer. In 1946, he ceased public performance in protest at worldwide general recognition 
of the Franco regime in Spain. This fella called Cabals. Is it Cabals? Casals, isn't it? Casals. Pablo Casals. Nominate Ansley. Pablo Casals. It was Pablo Casals, yes. <laughs> so, ten points for this. What term for a circular object or shape may be obtained by reversing the two syllables of the name of the Lord of Rivendell in works by Tolkien? Strathclyde Laird. Uh, Rondel. Rondel is correct, yes. <laughs> right, your bonuses this time are on chemical elements. The name of what element comes from the Swedish for heavy stone? What's the what's the heaviest one? Osmium? Yeah. Um, osmium? No, it's tungsten. Hmm. It's name derived from a Greek word meaning stone. What element gives off an intense crimson light in the flame test? What's, what's stone? Mm -hmm. uh, Petrus. Lithium or something? Petra. It's lithium. It's a, lithium. I think lithium. It's elements. Uh, lithium. Lithium is correct. Finally, the name of which group two element is derived from a word meaning limestone? Calcium. Calcium. Yeah, calcium. Calcium. Yeah. Calcium. calcium is correct. <laughs> We're going to take a picture around now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a still from a film. For ten points, give the film's title. Rodding Hutchinson. Midsummer. Midsummer is correct. <laughs> Harry Astor's Midsummer, a contemporary example of a genre now commonly known as folk horror. Your picture bonuses are three folk horror films from the 60s and 70s. Five points for each you can identify. First. Hmm. Any idea? Which uh, Finder General? Which Finder General, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. Nominate Scopic. Uh, which Finder General? Correct. The Conqueror Worm. Secondly, and note this is a black and white image from a colour film. Cool. What's that in the background? Um, oh, what's what's the one with Nick Cage where he's got his head in a something? Oh, the fly. Uh, the fly. Oh, I'm not that's sure. Right. That's... Um, but I'll say it anyway because no, I'm not okay. sure. Go, go, go. It's not the Wicker Man, is it? No, that's not. Uh, the say, okay, the fly. No, that's the blood on Satan's claw. Mm -hmm. Or Satan's skin. And finally, this one, please. Oh, my. Uh, is, that, is that the Wicker Man? No, that's not the Wicker I Man. I don't really don't think that is. Um, the Wicker Man. That is the Wicker Man, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. Ha, Ryman, Stelches and Lebec all give their names to what mathematical construct used in calculus? Strathclyde Land. Uh, Definition. No. Anyone want to buzz from Reading me? Hutchinson? Integral. Integral is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses now on a Scottish island. Oh, oh God. The 5,000 year old Callanish standing stones are located on which large Hebridean island? Any ideas? Mm, no. Yeah. Do you want to give me a Hebridean island? Um, no. Lewis? Lewis is correct. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Excellent. Near to the Callanish stones is Dun Carlaway, a prehistoric circular stone tower of a type known in Scotland by what five-letter name? Uh, something like a, a block or a... Nominate Ansley. A brock. A brock is correct. Well done. In 1831, a stone case was discovered buried in the dunes of Wig Bay on Lewis's west coast. It contained what carved items? Chess pieces. Chess, chess, yeah. chess, chess pieces. pieces is yeah. correct. <laughs> Right, ten points for this. If a lion could speak, we could not understand him. Who made this statement in a work published soon after his death in 1951? Strathclyde Land. Bertrand Russell. No, it wasn't. Anyone want to buzz from Reading? Reading Elmsley. Alan Turing. No, it was Ludwig Wittgenstein. Ten points for this. What number is represented by the Roman numeral that matches the chemical symbol of the group five element named after a Norse deity? Strathclyde Laird. Vanadium. No. Anyone want to buzz from Reading Rome? Hutchinson? Five. Five is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get three bonuses on football clubs and their Latin mottos. One of the founding members of the Football League in 1888, Nil Satis Nisi Optimum, meaning nothing but the best is good enough, is the motto of which football club? 
Um, so it's going to be Midlands or up north. They're the, they're the 12 that started it all off. Um, yeah. I'll just go for one, yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, Preston, North End. No, it's Everton. <laughs> Arte et labore, meaning by skill and hard work, is the motto of which football club, also a founding member of the Football League? One of the Sheffield ones, maybe. Yeah. It'll be a working man's one, mm -hmm. maybe. Sheffield like Wednesday. I feel like maybe Liverpool now. OK, go on. It's not Liverpool. Mm -hmm. I don't no. Know, Sheffield United go for short one. Sheffield United? No, I don't know. Oh, Liverpool. No, it's Blackburn Rovers. Superbia in Proelio, meaning pride in battle, is the motto of which prominent football club? Mm. Well, Arsenal. Prominent. So you're thinking City or it's not United. It certainly isn't Tottenham. Uh, well, just a second. It might be another country, to be honest. I don't know. It's part of the league. The league. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's Arsenal. Possibly Come on, Arsenal. Arsenal. No, it's Manchester City. Oh, Ten points for this. The 22nd parallel north forms the major part of the border between which two countries in North East Africa? Uh, Reading Hutchinson. Sudan and Egypt. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on words that begin with the same three letters. In each case, identify the word from the definition. Firstly, an alloy comprised chiefly of iron and nickel. Its low thermal expansion leads to its use in measuring instruments such as surveying rods. I can't think. No, I Shall we just know. pass so we've got yeah, the basis? Yeah, 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 pass. That's Invar. Secondly, an enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of sucrose to the simple sugars glucose and fructose. So it's INV. INV? Yeah, it starts with the same three letters. Inverase? Inverase. Yep. Inverase. No, it's invertase. Oh. <laughs> an adjective meaning to confine people within a space during an emergency. Invalid, maybe? Yeah. Nominoscopic. This is invalid. No, it's invacuate. Ten points for this. Answer as soon as your name is called. A molecule of butane and a molecule of benzene together contain how many carbon atoms? Strathclyde Lab. Ten. Ten is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on dictators of the Roman Republic. Which Roman dictator twice ceded power in the 5th century BC to return to work on his farm? Just have a case. <laughs> and that was on... Strathclyde have 110, Reading have 175. It was Cincinnati. So we'll, I'm afraid, have to say goodbye to you, Strathclyde, at 110. I don't think you're going to be one of the highest scoring losing teams, but you never know. Reading, congratulations. 175 is a great score, and we should look forward to seeing you in round two. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Strathclyde University. Goodbye. 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 It's goodbye from Reading University. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>